What up, family? This is for my real family. The other video I did was for my uh, viewers, but this is for my family. Look at Grumpy Kitty. We had to switch glasses and stuff. Real fucking so. They try. You know they killed Grumpy Cat. Did you know Grumpy Cat was a girl? See? See? And Grumpy Cat got a brother, but they didn't kill her brother. They were um, premature cats or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh huh. Nine times out of ten, me and Grumpy Cat got more in common than Oprah Winfrey. You know, she's a dog lover. You know, they say it's a doggy dog world. And I've been seeing a lot of cats lately. Lately, with their guts splattered out in the streets and stuff, real talk, dead, left in the gutter or whatever. And on my block, which is O Block, because they got a rapper named O Block, and in 1995, I told, you know, Oprah on three cassette tapes, you know, my voice to the sound of music. I did, a, I gave a whole bunch of good stuff. You understand what I'm saying? I said, they talked to you for me. But I was talking about uh, Tupac at the time because I knew he was going through something. And I wanted him, you know, to slow down and stuff because he was drinking and drugging a lot. And I felt like he was trying to, you know, put my story on his back or whatever. So the spirit helped me to um, tap him out. And I'm hoping he's still alive. And if I, if not, you know, rest in power to him and stuff because there's levels to this and stuff for real. But I come back for the devil for real. But, you know, regardless, everybody played a part, right? You understand what I'm saying? This is not a movie, though. This is my real life and stuff. Yeah, they killed Grumpy Cat because when I was at Sarah Soka in Uptown in my city, Chicago, you know, you know, they, I, I was taking care of this fish. And then I came in one day and they killed the fish. And then when I took a liking to Grumpy Cat, you know, they exploited Grumpy Cat, and they killed Grumpy Cat. They made a lot of money off of Grumpy Cat, just like me. Just like they exploited me. It's black exploitation television. Now it's YouTube. You understand what I'm saying? Real tough. So, in 1995, I didn't think Oprah Winfrey was worth a million dollars because my mind wasn't fully developed because I suffer from retardation, slow ism and lack of education and stuff like that you understand what i'm saying but my higher power was gifting me with the power of uh writing and you know i hadn't caught up with my writings that's what it was but i caught up now you know you know after a while you get hit in the face so many times you start want to know why you understand what i'm saying because people are jealous of you your own people are kill you you understand what i'm saying for whatever reason jealousy and envy or whatever so and now they're going after the cats and stuff but what happens if you if you hit a dog or you you know what they did to Michael Vick, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They threw the fuck at him and stuff. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, when I was coming back on the block today, O Block, you understand what I'm saying? Or Obama Block, whoever knows. I don't know. You know, this girl was walking her dog and then I was going, you know, walk down the sidewalk. But, of course, here comes somebody all the way at the end of the sidewalk before I can even get on the sidewalk to walk down it. With a dog, so I got to walk in the streets and stuff. And guess where the ladies stay? Not too far from me and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like next door or whatever and stuff. A couple of houses down or whatever and stuff. You know, and the dog looking at me and I'm looking at him. You know what I'm saying? Because this is what they do. They, you know, they trying to bring them 60s back. So I got these old ass glasses and stuff. You understand what I'm saying? Got them from the, um, the Goodwill uh, store on Western and stuff. See, they want to. Bring back that old stuff. You know, if you notice, they bring them back a whole bunch of old stuff. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, I told Oprah in 1995, just give me $2 million tax-free and the rest can go to charity. $2 million. I'm worth at least a zillion. I'm priceless. You understand what I'm saying? Oprah Winfrey was worth $500 million in 1995. That was her network. You understand what I'm saying? See, all they wanted to do was, you know, you know, that's why they put me on a psych ward and stuff like that to, to give her my legacy because, you know, they figure, hey, she was one of them and I'm not one of them because they told me that at Mercy Hospital when they had made me homeless and, you know, I went in there to, you know, to, uh, you know, get some rest or whatever. And the nurse brought a, uh, a teenage girl in my room my private room and had her start kissing on me and I was dead sleep, dead tired. Cause you know, when you homeless, you be dead tired. I was dead tired. Right. And I woke up and like, what the fuck and shit. And I had a so-called girlfriend at the time, Lawanda Joy Jacobs, AK the Jehovah witness and you know, blue cross blue shield insurance agency person and 
she knew Oprah Winfrey. You see where this is going? This is tripped out. Now, pay attention. Michael Jackson supposedly had died June 25th, right, of 2009. And I didn't know that. I heard Farrah Fawcett had died June 25th of 2009. But when I was on parole in Champaign, Illinois, guess who called me with the bad news? My uh, so-called ex-girlfriend, LaWanda Joy Jacobs, the Jehovah Witness, of course, Michael Jackson family, you know, they Jehovah Witnesses too. And she said, do you know who? Who died? I said, who? Farrah Fawcett? And he's like, no, Michael Jackson. And I was on my way to anger management. You know, I had paid $300 to get my anger management, you know, certificate or whatever and stuff. So they wanted to piss me off. So I went to anger management. I said, hey, did y'all hear Michael Jackson died? They looked at me like I was crazy. So nine times out of ten, he probably didn't die. You understand what I'm saying? So you have to be careful of the narrative people throw out at you and stuff and the news and stuff because you got fake news and all kind of stuff. And um, in AA, they say you will not be able to differ, dif dif oh, excuse me, you will not be able to differentiate, there you go, you know, the real from the, you know, fake and stuff, meaning you will not be able to tell the difference and stuff, you understand what I'm saying? See, you know, I'm trying to, you know, you know, get my speech out, you know, that's why I'm not a rapper and stuff, but I write my ass off, you know that, right? So, um, I got Oprah's attention, that's for damn sure. You understand what I'm saying? So it was too much writing for me and stuff. So I just started doing videos to tell my real Mary McAmyers and family and stuff what's going on. You know, so we're talking about this money. You understand what I'm saying? So she, if she was worth $500 million in 1995, and it takes two $500 millions to make a billion, and she had my story and pimp, 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 me and my AA you know, legacy and rap legacy and everything else, and along my people, you really think she's still worth only a few billion dollars? If I'm worth a zillion, think about it. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all seen the movie Train Today. What did they do? They went after the, the big cheese, and that's what they, you know, told me at my Chase Bank. Them white people say, yeah, this the big one, and then they closed down, you know, the Chase Bank on Montrose and Broadway and stuff. You know, and want to leave me with less than $800 a month. No food stamp. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not finna go sign up for that so everybody can follow me and You understand what I'm saying? Then they kill me and shit. Fuck that. We gonna starve. Motherfuckers need to fucking goddamn lose weight any goddamn way. If they can pay for weed, they can pay for food and shit. You understand what I'm saying? Real fucking talk. So they figure, hey, you know, I work for food or, uh, you know, you know, motherfuckers rapping for food. You got crackheads making rap CDs. I ain't mad and shit, but goddamn, can I get my book, Ryan's Points and Metaphors, plus one song back? Oh, I forgot. It's too late because this is the deadline for you niggas and shit. For real. I told you I ain't playing. But because, you know, this is still February, you know, a lady could change their mind. I can do this all the way up until the last fucking minute if I want to and shit. You understand what I'm saying? Real fucking talk. But yeah, so I don't want to get addicted to retelling my story over and over and over again because everybody know in um 1995 after they railroaded me and put me on the psych ward because you know oprah had got what she wanted them three cassette tapes and stuff front and back or whatever and stuff and the streets they got it and they figured they had you know my mental down what what mr go say walking through the mind of mr go see money talk bullshit walk i'm money when i talk Everybody listens, like E.F. Hutton. You understand what I'm saying? You might be too young for that if you're a new Mary McNamara. But you new motherfuckers, you need to start, you know, going back at least from, you know, the civil rights era on up and stuff. And then once you figure that out, if you just listen to my videos and stuff, you could get a good understanding. Then you can go even back further to, you know, Jim Crow and uh, the Uncle Tom Cabin and, you know, the birth of a nation, you know, this is this this shit is all y'all doing is going backwards. You understand what I'm saying? I don't know what they expect me to do. Cause if you kill Grumpy Cat, you understand what I'm saying? You know goddamn well what they'll do to me. You understand what I'm saying? And they've been doing it all along and stuff. So they just needed my people to tell the story, to live to tell the story. And that's what everybody did. Everybody's fighting to tell their story and stuff. And go ahead, you understand what I'm saying? But at the end of the day. If you like me for real, for real, stop telling it. You understand what I'm saying? For real. And let them figure out the hard way what's to come. You know why? Because change is constant. And that's why they trying to go backwards because they are familiar with that. See, it's easy to talk about the dead. You understand what I'm saying? Then it is to, you know, respect and represent the living that you know 
is the reason why you still alive and stuff. Because it wasn't for people like me pushing this real talk. For real, for real. Y'all niggas would be dead already. Think about it. What if I would have came out in 2016 after they tried to kill me and just shut the fuck up and shit? I would be dead. You understand what I'm saying? You got to keep moving, nigga. For real. Real fucking talk. Meaning you got, you know what I'm saying? That's why if motherfucker gets shot, they say, hey, wake up, slap him. Hey, talk to me. You understand what I'm saying? Real fucking talk. So now I'm going to shut the fuck up and we can see how long we live without me. Because I feel like this. When I die, we all die. I just broke the crown on my pool um, table or whatever and stuff. And the one and the uh, white ball fell to the left. I'm number one. My mother, my foster mother, Betty Jean Redden, asked me, why am I writing with my left hand when I'm a right-handed? And I was young, and I said, because if something happened to my right hand, I want to still be able to write. So the one drop on the left side with the white people, I'm not dying without you motherfuckers. You understand what I'm saying? Because everybody and their mama try to save you niggas. And the two ball dropped on the right, and that's on my mama. You understand what I'm saying? See? See the blue? See? I am Mary Lee Mack. Okay? That's me. Uh-huh. And my so-called best friend, Dwayne Lewis, his phone number started off 773-487. I believe it was 0547. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, they want to get this rent. All they want is the rent. They, they don't want the girls to do anything. You know, because we did it. They just watched us, and now they want to kill us and stuff. The pussycats, unless you a dog, and they going to wear your ass out like a hoe, you know what I'm from behind? They don't want to be bothered. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what they trying to do to me. Fuck me one last time like doo-doo. And I say, when that happens, we all going to die. So if you ready to die like Biggie and shit, Try your fucking luck, nigga, because you know I don't fucking lose and shit. I'm taking all you cracker lovers with me and shit, because them crackers, they'll let you wear their ass out and shit. And they want the niggas to do the same shit, and the girls and all of whatever. That's why Dwayne Lewis let me, you know, fuck him in his ass and shit, because he wanted to, you know, do me. But I was like, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah. you know, I'll give you some pussy or whatever back in the day. One time, you know, I fucked him in his ass and shit. That's it, because nigga, I don't get out like that. And he said, go slow. You understand what I'm saying? What you thought I was going to return the favor, nigga? You got me fucked up. That's your story, nigga. Tell the truth. You're going to tell the truth. Tell the whole truth. You understand what I'm saying? I should have got the 12 inch, nigga. Real fucking so. If I knew you was going to do me like that, I'd have rammed it up your motherfucking ass and shit. Real fucking so. It's honest to God's truth. They selling their ass to get my spot. And with that, let me give you this fucking scripture, but this is the last one. Ooh. Does that say six, nigga? Huh? Bitch. What that say? Makai, five and six. Now we gang banger, bitch. Now we gang banger. This is on page 932. 93, 94, 95. I gave Oprah Winfrey my real story for real, for real, 1995. You see the nine, the three, and the two? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Great minds think alike. Oh, what's that? Six on this side and seven on this side. Israel's misery. What they say, misery loves company. That's what it say. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm finna give you all minds and shit. I told you I ain't going by myself, bitch. Huh? Now, you still want to play Russian roulette, you faggot? Huh? Dwayne Lewis, see, they pumped your name up when they arrested me and shit. They had you on a report, and then they did it again, and then, you know, they took your name off. I guess, you know, they paid you off or whatever. But God ain't finished with your ass yet, nigga. I'm God. Good orderly direction, motherfucker. Real fucking tough. And y'all ain't nothing but a group of drunks and shit. Fucking goddamn wishing like hell. I keep giving you this real fucking talk. Israel's guilt and punishment. The Lord's case against Israel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Israel real rise. You know I will. Rise up three. You was there when that girl pushed me at the pool hall, Dwayne Lewis. And I whooped her ass in the pool and her ass, goddammit. For real. Why you didn't fucking goddamn tell the truth about that, motherfucker? You still got a chance, nigga. Save your family this time, bitch, because I ain't got shit else to do with you. Now, huh? Run tell that, bitch. Peace.